Irfan is 18 years old. He is a student. He's the third self-radicalized young person we have detained in the last two years alone. And um, he was radicalized after watching videos online, uh, including videos of foreign preachers and ISIS online propaganda. And he wanted to live in an Islamic caliphate governed by Sharia law. He wanted to fight and die for ISIS. And he started saving and planned to go once he had saved enough money. And he made plans to declare an ISIS vilayat, it's a caliphate in Singapore. He made an ISIS flag. He wanted to plant it on Coney Island. He wanted to take a video taking, you know, of him taking the Pledge of Allegiance to ISIS, wearing his uh, National Cadet Corps uniform, ISIS headband, carrying a toy rifle. We arrested him four days before he planned to do this because he had also thought of three attack plans. The first to ambush and stab and kill disbelievers, and he said non-Muslims, Shia Muslims, and Sufi Muslims were all considered disbelievers, non-believers. So any one of those that he found he wanted to kill, uh, he bought a knife to do this. Uh, second, he wanted to recruit someone to do suicide bombing in Amoykui camp. Uh, he was familiar with that camp, the layout. Uh, third, he wanted to bomb Karamat Habib No, which is a graveyard attached next to Haji Muhammad uh, Saleh Mosque. He thought it was un-Islamic, uh, the gravesite, because it had been decorated, it was decorated, and it was not at ground level. So he wanted to plant a bomb. He downloaded a manual to make C4 bombs, and he wanted to make the bomb go to the grave and detonate it. If he had carried out any of these plans, uh, particularly the knife attack or the bombings, it, you can imagine it would have been very damaging. Uh, loss of lives, distrust and animosity in our community. So it was uh, quite serious. Uh, at the point of arrest, uh, he was determined to commit violence. He is, uh, in our assessment, likely to have carried out a knife attack at some point, not in the too distant future. It was, we assessed him to be an imminent security threat. That is why he was arrested. When we pick up young people, we put a lot of focus on them because we want them to go on and fulfill their potential in life. Uh, the idea of detention is not that that's the end. That's hopefully a beginning and a new path. Also, of course, the primary intention is to prevent them from doing harm to others, but we treat it as an opportunity to try and uh, get them onto a better path. So Irfan, for example, will receive a religious counseling um, and psychological as well as social rehab. A religious counselor from the Religious Rehabilitation Group uh, will counsel Irfan, educate him on Islam, and family support, of course, is going to be crucial, especially for young detainees. So there is an interagency aftercare group, we call it ACG, that will support Irfan's family, and we will encourage the family to support him. Uh, ISD has also worked with Irfan's school uh, to arrange for him to continue with his education. He will continue to sit for his exams uh, while in detention. He will also, in fact, he has an RRG volunteer who will act as his mentor to motivate him in his rehabilitation and guide him to develop pro-social uh, skills. Since 2015, as I said, nine young boys, I call them young boys, under 20, have been dealt with huh, under the ISA. Six of them were detained. Uh, three were given ROs, restriction orders. That means they are not detained, but certain restrictions on their movements. Most of them have made good progress uh, in their rehabilitation. I earlier talked to you, spoke with you about how ISD works with partners to try and help these young people move on and make something of their lives and move away from violence. So tremendous efforts to integrate them back into society. They are supported in education. They are given religious counseling, uh, social psychological support. Uh, so these are all, I will consider, lives saved, apart from the lives that uh, they would have taken if they had continued on their radicalization journey, or they would have gone overseas and killed others and probably gotten killed themselves you know, in fighting with ISIS. So 
we save them from destroying their lives and other lives. And at the same time, uh, make something of their lives. Look, our community partners, uh, our society does very well compared with other societies. Uh, the numbers, we don't like the numbers, nine since 2015, but compared with other countries, it is very small. And uh, what is the reason? Because the Malay Muslim community in Singapore takes a very strong stance uh, against violence, is uh, very uh, clear about what uh, Islam stands for, and the mosques uh, send out the message very clearly. People are able to practice their religion, whether it is Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, any other religion, in an atmosphere of trust and faith and uh, with mutual respect. When you alert MHA that someone is on this path, you're actually helping to save his life and make something of him possibly. So they will be able to study, go on, rehabilitate.